Hello, welcome. We are going to go over solutions to the homework problems assigned out of section 7.2. So let's get into it. So first we're asked to find the exact value of the following expression. Okay, so first we want to ask what does, no, oh, pardon for those errant marks, what does arc sine of root 2 over 2 mean? It means an angle, and I'm going to leave a blank spot here, whose sine is root 2 over 2. Now if I draw the standard unit circle, okay, and I'm asking how can an angle have a sine of root 2 over 2, that corresponds to a y coordinate of root 2 over 2, that's about here, okay, so here's y equals root 2 over 2. Observe that there are actually two angles in the standard unit circle that have this uh, value as its sine. So it specifically means an angle in quadrant 1 or quadrant 4, or even more particularly, in between minus pi over 2 and pi over 2. And these are less than or equal to. So what is an angle, either in quadrant 1 or 4, whose sine is root 2 over 2? Well, we're not going to take this angle in quadrant 3. We're specifically looking for this angle here in quadrant 1. And referring to a, either a standard reference circle or just our memory, this angle is pi over 4. Okay, so the arc sine of root 2 over 2 is exactly pi over 4. And then all we have to do is ask, what's the cosine of pi over 4? It's also root 2 over 2. So there's the exact value for this. And this is basically how we're going to do all the problems in this section, except the last one. We're going to ask, what does the inverse trigonometric function really mean? And then we're going to find an angle, and then we will take the trigonometric functions of that angle. So here we have, for example, arc cosine of minus root 3 over 2. This refers to an angle, and again I'm going to leave a blank spot, whose cosine is minus root 3 over 2. And in the standard unit circle, an x-coordinate of minus root 3 over 2 would be about here. And again, we've got two possible angles. We have one up here in quadrant uh, 2 and one down here in quadrant 3. Arc cosine is going to be either in quadrant 1 or quadrant 2. That's simply how the function is defined. Specifically, it's between 0 and pi. So what's an angle in between 0 and pi whose cosine is minus root 3 over 2? Well, that would be uh, 5 pi over 6. Okay, so then we just have to take the tangent of 5 pi over 6. Well, it's going to be the sine of 5 pi over 6 over the cosine of 5 pi over 6. I'm just using this because I don't remember reference values for tangent off the top of my head, but I do for sine and cosine. So this is 1 half over minus root 3 over 2, which simplifies down to uh, 1 over root 3 with a negative sign, which would typically be written like this. Okay, moving on. So now <clears throat> what changes is this angle is an angle, and remember arc sine is in quadrant 4 or quadrant 1, more particularly between minus pi over 2 and pi over 2, whose sine is 4 ninths. Now this isn't a standard reference angle, but that's okay because this is positive. Okay, 4 ninths is positive, which means the angle is not in quadrant 4. Remember in quadrant 4 the sine of an angle is negative, so we're in quadrant 1. So now what we have is we have theta is an angle, it's in quadrant 1, and the sine of theta is 4 ninths, and now what we have to do is we have to find the tangent of theta, and this looks like problems we did back uh, in earlier sections. So we rely on our Pythagorean identity, sine squared theta plus cos squared theta equals 1. Okay, the sine of theta is given as 4 ninths, so this is 16 over 81 plus cos squared theta equals 1. In other words, cos squared theta is equal to uh, 65 over 81, which means the cosine of theta is plus or minus root 65 over 9. Now, how do I know whether it's plus or minus? Well, we are in quadrant 1. We already observed that. And in quadrant 1, the cosine is positive. We'll actually see in the next problem that we could uh, almost omit this step. But it's worth pointing out, we know we're in quadrant 1. Therefore, we're going to take the positive one. So the cosine of theta must be root 65 over 9. And therefore, 
What's the tangent of theta? It's the sine of theta over the cos of theta. The sine of theta was given as 4 ninths, and we just found the cos of theta to be root 65 over 9. The division by 9 cancels out, and this is just 4 over root 65, or if you prefer, 4 root 65 over 65. And there's the exact value there. Okay, this function here, uh, sorry, this problem here doesn't ask us to find a number, it asks us to find an algebraic expression, because observe that u isn't given, u is left as a variable. But arc cosine u just means an angle, specifically between zero and we'll call the angle theta, where theta is in between zero and pi, remember it's in quadrants one or two for arc cosine. And what do I know about it? I know that the cosine of the angle is equal to u. That's what arc cosine u means, an angle whose cosine is u, and specifically an angle in between zero and pi whose cosine is u. And we're asked to find the cotangent of theta. Okay, well, let's use a standard trigonometric identity to find the sine. So again, sine squared u plus cos squared, sorry, sine squared theta plus cos squared theta is equal to one. The sine of theta I don't know, but I do know the cosine of theta is u, so here I get a u squared. This means sine squared theta is equal to 1 minus u squared, and therefore the sine of theta is equal to plus or minus the square root of 1 minus u squared. Then the question becomes, how am I going to determine which one I want, the positive or the negative? But remember, arc cosine specifically gives us angles either in quadrant one or quadrant two. So I know theta is in quadrant one or quadrant two. And in those two quadrants, the sine is positive, which means I happen to know, even though I don't know what u is, I want the positive root of one minus u squared, and that's the sine of theta. And then finally, sorry, not cosine, the cotangent of theta is cosine theta over sine theta, cosine theta was given to us as being u, and the sine of theta we just found out is the square root of 1 minus u squared. So that's the cotangent of theta, and remember theta was the arc cosine of u. So now we have a nice expression that the cotangent of the arc cosine of any number is given by that number over the square root of 1 minus the original number squared. And you can do similar formulas for any time you have a combination of um, a trigonometric function, sine, cosine, secant, etc., composed with or of an inverse trigonometric function, arc cosecant, arc tangent, etc. You go through a similar argument, you just have to remember what quadrants those inverse trigonometric functions give angles in, then use a relevant trigonometric identity to solve for what you need, and you'll end up with a formula like this.